after throwing the controversial elbow against Angola. Barkley had emerged as the team's most visible player. Everybody always had the same question. How much of a, an ass is Charles Barkley? Hey, Jack, when am I going to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated for this stuff? I should be on the Dream Team cover. And then every time you'd go spend time with him, you know, you'd just realize that he was the most enjoyable act, not only in all of sports, but possibly in all of pop culture. Sometimes I dream <laughs> that he is me. I just want to be like Chuck. I mean, Mike. Right away, I told my editors, I said, well, the number one angle here is what is Charles doing? And if you wanted the answer to that question, all you had to do was follow the crowds. They're like, we don't want you guys out and about because we don't know how safe it is. And I'm like, dude, I'm at the Olympics. I'm not going to stay in my room the whole time. So Barkley strolled Los Ramblas, a man of the people if ever there was one. Man, I walked up and down the Ramblas every night, and the people were fantastic. They all wanted autographs and wanted to take pictures. We could be inside the hotel. Soon we heard the big roar. We said, there go Charles. <laughs> so Charles would be walking, and then thousands would be following him everywhere he went, you know? He was the Pied Piper. Charles would go over to the village and, like, find the Angolan players and hang out along the Ramblas at night. He was the most memorable person of the 1992 Olympics. I just saw this touch he had. I don't think anybody else in the world could have done it besides Charles Barkley. At the end of the day, he was America's best ambassador. Barkley was celebrated for experiencing the Olympics on his own terms. More quietly, one of his teammates found a way to do the same. We had the motorcycle escorts, and we bust through traffic like Dick Tracy. But this one day, we got stuck in traffic, and we're just sitting there and sitting there and sitting there. Finally, I said, that's it. Let's go. Anybody wants to go with me, I'm heading. He'd get off the bus, and his family met him. He started walking right through the middle of everybody, and nobody noticed him. I'm still on the bus, sitting and walk down the street, and I'm saying to myself, I would give anything to do what he just did. See, guys, this is called the Rhombus. See all the footprints? All right. So the last Rhombus, it's like Times Square or something. There's just so many people walking. I'm six feet one. I'm about the average size of everybody else on that little walk. So I'm walking with my family, and I have the camera, and nobody's noticing me. You think it's the sunglasses that's fooling them? Must be. Hi. You're from America? Yeah. Right. Whereabouts? Uh, Whereabouts? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yeah. You been watching the Dream Team at all? Yeah. They're pretty good, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. No attention whatsoever. Finally, we ran across this lady who had the Dream Team and all the pictures on her T-shirt. Hi. Hi. Are you an American? Well, of course. You look wonderful. Why, thank you. She started speaking real excitedly about each of the players. And I said, have you had a chance to meet anyone? Yeah. Charles Barkley the other night. Did you? He's a hell of a player. See, you got all the players right there on your yeah. shirt. Is Charles the only one you've ever seen? The only one I've ever met. Hey, guys, do you know any of those guys on there? I think my oldest son, Houston, ruined the surprise. That's my dad. Your dad? That's your dad? Too bad he's not here. Do you play on a I do, yeah. Who is that guy? Oh, no. <laughs> I can't go anywhere without being bugged. <laughs> Really not much different from Michael Jordan walking through here. For the players, surreal experiences had become the norm. But even more memorable were the unlikely friendships developing behind the curtain. It was a unique mix. You know, Larry Bird and Patrick Ewan became like best friends. I got a white guy from Indiana, and I got a brother from Jamaica. Patrick said I could pick his mind. It took me, <laughs> took me three minutes. Now, now he gets a chance to come back and start picking on mine. <laughs> took me one. <laughs> we were probably the two of the most unlikely people you thought that would be friends. But if you look, not only Larry and I got to be great friends, but all of those guys got to be much better friends. We all enjoyed each other. We all enjoyed the ride. And we got a sense of each other as men. Then, when we got to the court, 
it made it even better. The Dream Team's chemistry turned out to be the hallmark of their success as the players closed in on what they came for. Barkley now over the side leading cheers. Their big margins of victory may have been a testament to their dominance, but numbers couldn't capture what made watching them so unforgettable. Guys played the best basketball you've ever seen in your life. It was literally like great poetry or great art. At times, you feel you're watching a performance, a concert, rather than a basketball competition. This was fun. This was like, it's how basketball is supposed to be. And at the center of the fun was the team's biggest star, who had come to Barcelona at the peak of his powers and shown how much his popularity had exploded. I will say this one thing about Michael Jordan. I've been around other celebrities in my life, I've never seen people react like they do to him. People go crazy when they see him. In every corner of the world, there was someone who just wanted to see him. Please, Michael Jordan! No one had the sort of pull, the gravity that Michael Jordan had. Jordan had initially come to Barcelona reluctantly, but an early morning trip just before the gold medal game revealed how meaningful his Olympic experience had become. What time in the morning is it right now? 6.30, 6 quarters, quarter seven, something like that. And I'm drinking coffee, so it's gotta be a hurry. Can we go now? Where are you from? Albuquerque. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Big fan of yours, everyone's a big fan of yours. <laughs> Your name? George Hirsch. George, how you doing? I'm doing Michael George, nice to meet you. Last night, I hit my wall, man. Did you? I couldn't make a basket. What are you doing up so early? I do remember getting up early <laughs> to walk into the stadium. That is the thing that I remember the most about the Olympics. Olympic Stadium. Imagine all the athletes that's been here before us. It's amazing. What about Edwin Moses? 122 consecutive races. I think everybody's got something to cherish. I think this is something that my kids are gonna love one day. The Dream Team squared off against Croatia again in the gold medal game, offering the world one more lasting impression of their supremacy. Barkley with the lead for Mullen. Team USA came to send a message tonight. We wanted to win and we wanted to dominate, but how we did it, sharing the ball, including everybody, we did it as a true team. The U.S. has defeated Croatia 117 to 85, and they have won the gold here in Barcelona. Campeón olímpico y medalla de oro, el equipo de los Estados Unidos de América. There was never really any doubt the Dream Team would win gold in 1992. But as they walked back onto the court to get their medals, the moment still overwhelmed them. You saw a lot of tears from players. It was a very proud moment for me because anytime you represent your country, you know, that's a prideful thing. Send chills down my spine. It was a reward that I had never felt like that I would ever achieve. To do it on that stage with those group of guys, it's a memory I'll never forget. Nothing in my life has ever felt like standing on that podium. I was getting goosebumps. Every single time I heard the national anthem after that had a different significance to me. I knew what it really meant, you know. As a young kid growing up, I used to watch Olympics on TV with my father, and uh, all he talked about was the Star Spangled Banner and, and the gold medal. 
made him feel proud to be American. Being up on that podium that night and receiving it, my father, he'd been pretty proud. All those emotions just overcame me. I got to be one of the guys one more time for my country. I said, man, I'll never forget this moment. You know, if this is the end, this is how I wanted to go out. This group may well be the greatest team.